Welcome everyone to the Everything Show, episode 932. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I'm with Chris. What's up, Chris? What's up, guys? All right, so what's going on, Chris? Well, um, we haven't done casts in a little while, obviously, so we've got a bunch of news, nothing too crazy, but We'll start off with the, the lesser stuff, I guess. Or this well, why don't we start off with stuff. the Godzilla. I don't know if we covered this. Right, I was going to get to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say I've seen a couple of reviews for Kong Skull Island. Okay. The premiere is out. Now, none of these are professional reviews. Um, these are reviews for people that um, I talk to usually for Godzilla stuff. Right. Um, you know, we all have different opinions. A lot of people like Godzilla 2014. Some people that I talk to don't like Godzilla 2014. Yeah. Some really like Shin Gojira. Some people didn't like Shin Gojira. So it's, it's, a, it's a good mix of people. I have yet to see a negative review for Kong so far. That's great. Okay. They're not professional reviews. I saw one review today that said that this was better than 2014 and that the after credit scene is absolutely amazing. Really? So I'm very happy. I want, I want this movie to be better than 2014 because that would show like it, it would show a progression with this series. You know? So I'm very excited for that. I know that it, it comes out next week and I just, I can't wait. I mean, that last trailer that they dropped, too, was, was really good as well. I The last trailer was on friggin' real. I mean, if we yeah. thought the other trailers were... I mean, that was very telling of the stuff on the island that he has to face against, and the possibilities are endless on that island, that's for sure. Um, I, you know, when we first heard about this, I was like, oh, this is cool, you know? Yeah. But I didn't think of it in this kind of scale, how huge they were going to make this Kong universe type of thing with the the island that he's on, Skull Island. Um, this is probably quite possibly the best. From Before we see it, from just looking at this stuff, this is quite possibly the best rendition, I think, and utilization of the King Kong character. I'd say so, yeah. Um, blowing our minds now i remember back in the day they had talked about the original kong movie black and white um and how there was a rumor that you know that back then there were sequels but there wasn't a name sequel for it but we heard like different things like they had filmed other stuff and like the, the owners of the, the the reels or something something to do with kong with on the island with different creatures and different things. Um, never seen it, so it's just a rumor. But I always thought, looking at the original, oh, what if, you know, you got to see what's down there or what's here or what's there, you know? Right. And now we got our wish, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, you know, when Legendary got the rights to Godzilla and whatnot, one of the things I had said was, I want to see new monsters. Yeah. And we got the Mutos, which were great. Um, in this movie, we're getting like six or seven, at least, new different, you know, kaiju or whatnot, right. which are all classified as Mutos. So, I mean, I'm totally on board with, with this movie. Um, I'm glad it's not a retelling of, of the normal Kong story. Um, I'm glad it's, it's, you know, it's something different that, you know, it's not just, oh, Kong falls in love with this woman. They take him to New York. He falls off the Empire State Building. You know, th this is something totally different. And, I, you know, I wonder if, you know, the audience is going to see it are going to are going to be like, oh, wow, this is totally different. Um, or if they know that it's totally different, you know, from the marketing. See, the thing is that everybody's open to the idea of string theory and ultimate universe theory. He doesn't have to go to the Empire State Building in this universe. Right, you don't yeah. have to fall off the Empire State Building in this universe. It probably may not happen in this universe. It doesn't have to happen. I mean, right. you know, we're open to the possibility, to say, with Marvel, where they have, like, so many universes, and they show, like, all right, Earth-65 and this and that. 
doesn't have to even remotely resemble the original universe. So, I mean, Kong, you could do anything, basically. But yeah. I don't think he's gonna have to, they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to do it at all, ever. With the yeah, I, gonna... I don't think there's a need to. I think that story's been told so many times that, you that just there's keep no going need. back to the islands. Yeah. When he's done. Just like Godzilla will go in the water. And they play the music. And got the and does uh, save the earth or whatever, and the Godzilla will go in the water. Sometimes he's by himself, sometimes with people, like friends. But that's it. So yep. excited! I think I think it's going to knock it out of the park. I well over a billion dollars, easy. I think. In fact, maybe one billion five. I mean, I'm, this is going to be on caliber with. Um. Force Awakens, Avengers, whatever. I mean, it's going to, I think it's going to do really well. But I could be wrong because it's got competition. Yeah. So now I know we didn't get to cover the the casting of Godzilla. Yep. Um. So you do that, and I just want then I'll talk about the actress sure. who's my favorite, one of my favorite. Actors. Um. I don't. Rem- I know that we reported that Millie Bobby Brown was going to be in this movie. I don't remember if we reported the other two, so we just we'll just go over we them, did. right? So, so the first the, the or the second casting choice um, was Kyle Chandler. Now, Kyle Chandler, for those who don't know, I had to look him up too because I didn't recognize his name. I immediately recognized his face. He was in Kong two thousand five, the Peter Jackson Kong. He oh. played the actor. Uh, something Braxton, I think, or something like that. Um, he was the actor who went to the to uh, Skull Island with them, and he was going to be in the movie and whatnot. He's on a show now on Netflix. I, I don't remember the the title, but he is a very well known actor, um, and he is confirmed to be playing Millie Bobby Brown's character's father. Mm. And the rumor is that he is a zoologist in this movie as well. Okay. He is apparently the main character, human right. character of this movie. So that's interesting. The second or the third, I guess, but the second adult casting was Vera Farmiga. I love her. Yes. And she is confirmed to be playing Millie Bobby Brown's character's mother. I who may also you, be a scientist. I just may add to that. I have grown so attached to seeing her as Norma Bates in Bates Motel. Because if you remember the old Psycho movies, Norma Bates never was alive mm-hmm. for them to have you have a, an idea of what she was like. And then there was, there was a brief thing in Psycho 4, but she owned that role. And I got to tell you, when stuff happens, I don't want to reveal too much about it. I mean, basically everybody knows that when Psycho starts, she's dead. But when they killed her off last season, I was just devastated. And I guess the yeah. writer was devastated, too, because she couldn't even film. She couldn't be, be on the set when they killed the character. And she was blowing in her apartment, she said. I was just destroyed. I was like, oh. But I guess I knew they had to do that. And now they finished filming Bates Motel. It's done. Um, it's on air right now to watch the last season. They destroyed the sets. And immediately, like, Freddie Highmore is going to be a doctor on ABC. And she, but she had all this stuff. She was in roles with Robert Downey Jr., uh, The Judge. I don't know if you saw that. That was a great movie. She was in The Conjuring. Yep. As Lorraine, uh, I think it's Lorraine Warren or... Yeah, yeah. Right? And I saw both of them and blew my mind. But she could play any type of part. She's so good as an actress to just be completely different from what you've seen. And she's gonna, she is going to be known for this movie. She's going to knock this out of the park. And especially being with, um, what's her name, Millie Bobby Brown? Yes. Yep. I love her from Stranger Things. She is amazing. And she was also on other stuff in her career, too. She was in... I, uh, a Grey's Anatomy episode and stuff like that. So she she was. I didn't know this until a couple of days ago. She, Millie Bobby Brown was the main quote unquote villain 
in that show Intruders. Really? Yeah, I had no idea. Wow. And she was great in that. So, um, she's going to have a bright career. And I know she was on the set of Avengers. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason. Because I know she's been dying to get a role as a superhero or something. So, I don't know if she got a wish with the Infinity War, but... I'm gonna tell you, this is this Godzilla casting is amazing. Yeah, so far, yeah. I've also heard that the um, the only character from 2014 that's likely to return is Ken Watanabe as Doctor Serizawa, which is fine with me. No, that's upsetting because I would have thought that the uh, couple would have returned there. You know, I, you know, honestly, I don't think we need them back. I think their really? story, I think their story is over. Right. And I know that a lot of people weren't too thrilled with Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance in that movie. I know. Um, me neither. Um, but I, I think it, it's probably a good idea maybe to get, I mean, this cast so far, hmm. I mean, ha, is, is unbelievable. And, and right. the fact that it sounds like that both of, uh, you know, Kyle Chandler and Vera Farmiga, it, it's, you know, they're playing scientists apparently. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds to me like maybe they're going to get caught up with Monarch. Right. Or something. Um, I have this idea that maybe Millie Brown's character has this connection to Mothra and, and they are figuring too. it out. That's yeah. what I thought. When I heard that she was casting, I was like, oh, it's going to be like the kid that has the psychic link with the monster or some type of – she communicates with the monster tries to protect her or something. I felt the same way you did. Absolutely. Yeah. So – you know, I don't know. Apparently, they're they're going to be filming this summer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see it because I I really want to know what they're going to do with Ghidorah. That's the one thing that's really making me wonder, like, how are they going to yeah. do this? Now, I have a question. I, I saw that fake monster cinematic universe thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's the thing that I, I, I know when we talked about this years ago when Legendary was forming this Godzilla universe thing, and we were talking about the deal, mm -hmm. the deal, meaning how many Godzilla, and I really believed that the deal was like, not so much movies, but like, like 10 years or more. Like now, could it be possible that the deal ends? Oh yeah. Like, just like that, there's no contingency, there's no, hey, if, this movie makes five hundred million, or this thing. Like the deal is done when Godzilla fights Kong, and that's it. Th this, from what I know, that is the case. After Godzilla versus Kong, that's it. God, really? Now, he, here, here is the thing. Thomas Tull, who was a big part of doing this, is no longer with Legendary. Unbelievable. He he is staying on as a producer for. Godzilla King of the Monsters, yeah, for Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong. He is out after that. He's, oh, he's no longer in charge. The new owner of Legendary is a Chinese corporation. I can't remember the guy's name. There's a specific name. He has apparently specifically said, after this series, we're moving away from movies like this. I can go at himself, first of all. Piece of crap. They they want to go. It's not that it's not that they have anything against these types of movies. Ridiculous. It's the fact that they want to produce, I guess, a more highbrow oh, entertainment kind of thing. Whatever. Like Oscar pieces, I guess yeah, maybe. Right. That makes um, like Oscar movies make money. Yeah. Well. Well, here's the thing. Okay, I don't give a crap about that. The thing is that I. It's like just when we're getting our feet wet. With the Godzilla Cinematic Universe, with Kong and everything, it's like we can never get enough. It's like you ever feel that way, like throughout the career with Godzilla, you get this little series and there's like four movies or five movies, and you're like, yeah, it's getting it going. All right, they're bringing, you know, this version of Mecha Godzilla, this version of Mothra, this version of Ghidorah, Gahedra, whatever, and then it just stops, and then it's like, oh crap, now we got somebody else's vision of Godzilla, and it's not really quite that yeah. good. You know, well, it's like, when are we just going to get where we just pop out these movies for like 10 years, 15 years, and just 
Like it's going to be like a period of time where Godzilla's going to be off the air. Well, th- this is this is the thing with that. No- normally, I would be on board with with what you said. Right. However, I am okay with them stopping after Godzilla vs. Oh Kong. hell no! No, no, we got I, I'll, Shin Gojira. That thing is garbage. no, 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 no. Let, let me let me explain why. After Godzilla vs. Kong, okay, that that's going to be about three movies for Godzilla and whatnot. There's no doubt in my mind that that movie is going to do unbelievable numbers, even if the movie is terrible, because it's Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, I don't expect the movie to be terrible. I no, don't. it's not going to be terrible. No. I think it's going to be good, depending on who they get to direct it and write it and whatnot. Right. Um, however, I would rather them go out on a high note than continue this series and people get tired of it, because in my opinion, that will do more damage to ever bringing Godzilla back to the to the United States for movies than if they go out on a high note. Because if you think about it this way, if they go out with Godzilla vs. Kong... Now, there is something I will come back to, but if Godzilla vs. Kong does really well and it ends the story of both Godzilla and Kong, or that story of just this Godzilla, not that they kill him off, but that, that it just ends the story... Then if you let that go for a couple of years, people say, yeah, I want to see more Godzilla. Then you bring him back. But they if the movie does well, that, yeah, they yes, they do. Yes, they, they do? do. Yes, they do. Absolutely. So if they Be- care so much what people want, and if people are happy with overstatic, why don't they continue it? Because if, you, because if you continue this forever. Not that they continue it forever, but I mean, get a fake, get, get like, I mean, you can make Kong movies. Kong, Kong, I agree. You can keep doing Kong movies. Are they allowed? Well, first of all, wouldn't they still be allowed to do Kong movies? I'm almost certain they can. I bet, but we have more control Kuchoho. over that than Godzilla. It's no. us. That's ours. Yeah. So Kong, I could see. It, it's Godzilla that I think if you can't keep doing it for 10 years straight because but the thing. at some point it, they're going to get tired of it. It's not about the 10-year number. Because in 10 years, you won't have 10 Godzilla movies. No. You'll, you'll have like three or four. But so they, is that if they, really bad? I mean, yes. why? Because, it's done right. some, because this is why. You, you can't think of kaiju movies in the same vein as superhero movies or movies like Fast and Furious and Transformers. Because in the United States, in the Western market, it is a very niche market. It does not appeal to everybody. And at some point, the market will say, listen, we're done. We would rather watch these other movies. That is why I'm, I'm very concerned about Kong Skull Island coming out when it does, because it's coming out against Beauty and the Beast a week later. Well, that, that movie that is going to blow gonna the box itself. office. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a problem. It is. But it's like you and I say. They don't release these movies at the right time. They don't. I absolutely agree. They don't. You know what it is? It's, and I hate to say this, but every company, CEO, every, everybody has an ego. What they do is they're like, F it. Yeah. It's all like a game. Yeah. Like an actual game where they're like, my movie's going to go against your movie and let's go to the death. And it's like a big joke because, Mm -hmm. you know, but in the end, movies get destroyed Mm -hmm. because there's too much shit to watch. And I hope I didn't piss off YouTube by not being advertiser friendly with that comment. But anyway, uh, like, this is what happens. It's like, you remember that summer where it was the first time ever that all these sequels went against each other at the same time? It was like Ghostbusters 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Star Trek 5. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, t- it was ridiculous. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. And, yeah. and the, fun- the thing was that they didn't realize that everybody, back then, it wasn't a thing where you went to see 20 movies. Yeah, you no. Know? The, the, the situation was different. But back then, it's like... Everybody just stood at them, you know, so they were picking and choosing. And even though these movies did great, right, they could have been a thousand times better, like money-wise. But because they went into each other, it was like 
not happening. You know, like Ghostbusters would have made way more. Indiana Jones and less everything. It, it never went away since then. It was, and, and again, it got to be a point when Avengers came out. Yeah. Scared the shit out of the market that people would do delaying movies for eight months. Turtles wouldn't have been a success if it was released when it was supposed to be released. It got a sequel because it was released a good time. Titanic yeah. originally was part of that model. The movie was going to come out, I think, in the spring. And James Cameron said, screw it. I'm putting it out when nothing's against it in December. Remember those days? And there was literally nothing coming out that this movie was unheard of. Titanic was number one yeah. from December, January, February, March, April. A crappy movie rendition of Lost in Space beat it because it's just been out too long. That's the only reason to beat it. Otherwise, when do you ever have that where a movie's been number one for four months? Yeah. Right now they have it. All right, your life cycle is going to be three months, then you're going to go on Blu-ray, right? They, they, right away they assume, all right, Blu-ray sales, DVD sales. This movie, Titanic, was out for freaking months. So if you release, like, say, The Mummy in August, you're okay. If yeah. you re- I mean, you got Wonder- when the hell is Wonder Woman come out? Like, soon. They're all on top of each other, and then you get a month or two, you're like, well, is anything coming out? Like, Guardians of the Galaxy proved that August could be a popular month. Right? August this year could have, could be a huge month for a movie like Kong Skull Island. L- last year, it could have been. They could have yeah. put Ghostbusters out in August, and they would have been rolling. In if the they would have put that movie out in August, I think that they would have been fine. I really do. But see, here's the thing. With, I mean, I don't want to talk about Ghostbusters, but right. I want to talk about Ghostbusters. This movie has, in the city, and I just filmed it today. At the mm-hmm. They still have the Ghostbusters experience. They're still advertising the new Ghostbusters. It's friggin' March. So obviously, there's a, there is a demand for these characters, and there's a demand for this that the company has to choose. But anyway, it's not quite the... You know, what you think it is, because people started catching on what was on cable and DVD and right. changing their minds. You know what I'm saying? So, Because right. if you think about it, when did we have those type of special effects back in the day? They, they was, Such stuff was really cool with the gadgets and everything, too. Not necessarily the team, I'm saying. But this thing now, that would have did $100 million more. And Suicide Squad, if the Joker was the villain and not the Enchantress, that thing would have been $1 billion, $400 million. Because they would have been released in, in, in China, right? It wasn't allowed to be in China because of the yeah. sorcery and shit. Yeah. Please, man. But yet Doctor Strange goes in there, which I don't know what the hell that is. But all right. Damn. It, it's a different ball game. I mean, they have the ego. They're like, yes. But then what happens is when the movies are number one, like Congo will be number one that week, right? Yeah. Yep. The next week, it's the drop off of. 50%. Because it, once it, you, or more. Once that's you generous, get, yeah. Once you get that drop off, you're done. You can't go backwards. The only movie that's ever went backwards from, like, bottom to top was, like, My Greek Fat Wedding, the first one. Because people were like, and that was the only movie that was never number one, that was always number two, that, like, whatever. Ridiculous money. It's like that broke all the rules of box office. But, and movies still do that. Movies yep. still break. They, they, they can't manage certain things. I mean, Rogue One kicked everybody's ass. Mm-hmm. Kicked everybody's ass, man. We would think, oh, is it going to make a billion? Oh, we don't know. It's not going to be Force Awakens numbers. All right, it wasn't. But you know what? It's the number 20th movie of all time. Of yep. all time worldwide. And I don't mean to be passionate and wave my hands around like an Italian. But no, yeah, but I you're get, right, though. I, I get excited about this stuff. Kong is going to get killed. By Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is going to eat that and spit that out. That thing yeah. is going to be... In fact, other movies should be scared of Beauty and the Beast. So let me tell you something. Not for nothing. That Disney movie like destroyed everything when it was animated. Mm-hmm. People... And even I went. And I wasn't like a, you know, Disney movie nut. I went and bought every version of it. Because I, I loved it. And and let we want to clarify too, we're we're not just singling out Kong here too. 
It's Logan. Yeah. It's Kong. It's Power Rangers. It's anything coming out this month in any proximity to Beauty and the Beast right. is going to get utterly – the only way Beauty and the Beast doesn't do it is if the movie sucks so bad right. that it's an absolute disaster that the word of mouth is like, don't go see it. But the odds of that happening are slim to none. Let me tell you something. Logan, in order for it to be successful, I don't care if it makes $170 million like they're saying. It needs to be number one a second week and a third week. And guess what? That's not happening. So that's going to be short-lived, okay? Look at Batman vs. Superman, right? The biggest drop-off <coughs> in history, right? Mm. It made, and it was skydiving down without a parachute. Remember that? Yeah. People are like, I don't know what, they're all like, oh, oh my God, and they're not, they don't know what's happening. They, they were like contradicting themselves. They're like, oh, this movie's going to do so much great. And then it was like, why is it dropping? Wait, it's, it's dropping. Whoa, whoa. It was like, shit, that thing, like, oh, 70%, boom. And they got scared, you know? But th- we have, this is, this is, this is why I'm scared. Because uh, 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 the industry, it's not good for the industry. We have Wonder Woman. Now, uh, we need a list, Chris. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the box office list because I want to yeah. make sure that we get the friggin' accurate release date schedule all right so we have logan this week which i will go see okay on the 10th we got skull island which that will be number one i'm sorry to say logan is going to be number two there is no way in hell you're going to tell me that it's going to stay number one so logan's going to be number two kong's going to be number one that's the way it's going to be on the 17th, Beauty and the Beast is going to come out. That's going to be number one. Kong's going to be number two. And Logan's going to be number three. Do you agree? Yes. The, the only way I can see it different is if Logan is unbelievably good, like surprisingly. Okay. And it just maintains number one. Now, he, he, here's my prediction for the 24th. All right? Unfortunately, Chips is going to come in fifth place. Life is going to be like ninth place. Power Rangers is going to be like coming like third or something. Because what's going to happen is Beauty and the Beast is still going to be number one. Mm -hmm. Kong is going to still be number two. Logan's going to probably be number three. Or Logan's going to start to drop off. And Power Rangers is going to be number three. Okay? So see what I'm saying now? These movies need to have staying power for a month, and they're not having that. They're getting a short-lived life cycle. On the 31st, Ghost in the Shell, I don't. I, I tell you right now, I don't think it's going to do anything. Yeah, I don't think that movie's going to do as well as they think. I think all these movies are going to tank. Mm-hmm. Boss Baby, Ghost in the Shell. In fact, they'll probably make fun of Boss Baby on Silent Night Live, even though it's, you know... Baldwin, because it was like, oh, yeah, remember when your movie came in 10th place? I mean, basically, why would you put that out? Now, again, April 7th, Smurf Lost Lost Village. You know, I mean, I don't – let's go into April. April 7th, Smurf Lost Village. April 14th, Fate of the Furious. That right there is number one. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say. I mean, I like Fast and Furious, but okay. Oh no, yeah, it's gonna be April, number one. April, yeah. April twenty first. Um, I don't really see anything here that's. Fate of the Furious be number number one. Yeah. The twenty first, twenty eighth. Um. Still, it will be number one. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry, but there's nothing here that I see being number one. All right, so let's go to May. Let's just go to May now, okay? May 5th, Guardians of the Galaxy will be number one, okay? May 12th, Guardians of the Galaxy will be number one. May 19th, Alien will be number one. Yeah, okay? yeah. May 26th, Pirates comes out. Yeah, so that's what's gonna out? be. So now Alien's not number one anymore. And Baywatch is going to get killed. 
So see what I'm saying? You just, you just, they're killing each other. Wonder Woman comes out the next week, June. All right. Now this is going to be tough. Now it comes out June 2nd, right? The next week is the mummy for crying out loud. They're on top of each other. There's no room to breathe. Yeah. Cars, Cars 3 comes out the 16th. Um, Transformers comes out the 23rd of May. And then Despicable Me 3, you know that's going to be number one. Despicable Me is always number one. Go into July, Spider-Man Homecoming, that's number one. And then War of the Planet of the Apes is the second freaking week. Are you crazy? Like, that's disastrous. Because that's going to do, that might be, that might be number one. And then you got Dunkirk, which is um, Christopher Nolan's movie that people talk about. That may be up there. And then um, we'll go to August. Oh, I'm sorry. Dark Tower. I'm sorry. I skipped that. Dark Tower. Stephen King. That's probably going to do well. Uh, August 4th. Emoji movie. I don't see it. Sorry. Annabelle 2. That will do good. Because guess what? It's coming out at a time when nothing's out. So Annabelle 2 will be like 300 million, whatever. Made like, what, 5 million to make? You know? Mm-hmm. And then what do we got? September, we got it, I guess. There's nothing really. You see that flatliners? I mean, they could have put stuff out in September, honestly. Mummy could have been September. Blade Runners in October. The Kingsman's in October, the same same day, the sixth, which is suicide, because Kingsman's yep. gonna destroy Blade Runner. I'm sorry. Yeah. My Little Pony's gonna be number two. Blade Runner's gonna be number three. And the people, you know what it is? It's been too long. It's not gonna do well. People don't remember what it is. They're not. It's not gonna do well. Not against Kingsman, because Kingsman and My Little Pony. Insidious Chapter Four. I didn't even know they were gonna do a four. That's gonna be number one on the twentieth. And then the 27th, we have Saw coming back mm-hmm. with a Cloverfield-type movie, possibly, also, um, that they have listed here. It just says 2017 Cloverfield movie. Yeah, that Cloverfield movie will probably make a lot of money, even if it's not number one. Uh, November, Bad Moms is going up against – Bad Moms Christmas is going up against Thor Ragnarok. You know what Thor's going to win, obviously. And Justice League, too. And – the next week on the 10th of November is Daddy's Home 2. All right. Justice League's on the 17th. Murder on the Orient Express. I heard that, you know, that her movie, uh, Daisy's movie, the 22nd. And then uh, here we go. On the 15th, the Star, Star Wars, December. And then you got the 22nd, you got uh, Jumanji. Pitch Perfect 3, $6 billion man at the same time. So they're all getting killed. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people filing for taxes, that uh, tax write-offs. Um, movies are just going to get killed. You know it, Chris. Yeah. It's going to be a horror story. And then they're going to decide, all right, you know, we're not going to do this anymore. They're going to change the way the movies are, where they're going to probably release them into your own house two weeks after it comes out or something, because these movies are going to take a hit this year. This year is going to, I'm telling you, this year is going to change the way movies are. You, you think so or no? I mean, yeah, I, I do, you know, specifically, you know, you know going, going back to what I was saying before, because, you know, I wanted to say, getting a little bit off topic. The the only way I see them making more Godzilla movies is if Godzilla King of the Monsters and if Godzilla vs. Kong does like unbelievable to the point where they're like, you know what? Yeah, we'll make more. Yeah. Here's the getting back on topic. This is not the only time that this monster verse is going to be up against Disney. No, no. 2019. And I uh, specifically, yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently 2019, a week we after, yeah, a week after Godzilla King of the Monsters comes out, guess what's rumored to come out? What? The Lion King. Oh, uh, we're done. Yeah. James Earl so, Jones is returning. Yeah. So um, I'm saying, yeah, move that release date. Yeah, absolutely. Move Godzilla King of the Monsters release date. 
put and put Godzilla out August. Right? Or Something no? like that. Summer, August, you know, I you know. Whatever, man. Look at the way all these movies were afraid before, remember? Yeah. We're talking about rings. If rings came out when they were supposed to come out, they would have been all right. I think. Better than they would happen now. Split destroyed it. Yeah, Split oh yeah. still Split's yeah. still kicking movies' ass. Still. The movie made it's like almost a two fifty now, right? Yeah. They never no, expected no, no one can say M. Night Shyamalan doesn't know what he's doing anymore. He's had two good movies back to back. You know what's funny? After seeing and this is this is hysterical, right? We reported that the Tales of the Crypting was done, remember? Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's still and going. Then, well, 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 wait, wait, wait. This mm-hmm. is the funny thing, right? Like weeks after Split started doing great, you see M. Night Shyamalan talking about Tales of the Crypt. The stuff that they showed was not Tales of the Crypt. Mm. They were showing stuff from Penny Dreadful with the bats. They were showing everything but Tales of the Crypt. I don't even know if they should even show anything in Tales of the Crypt. I don't even mm. know if they have anything in Tales of the Crypt. Remember, it was supposed to come out in October? Oh, yeah, was it? Yeah. So I think what happened was, you know, they were like, oh, shit. His movie's like 230. Honestly. Mm-hmm. Because we, we, they reported that on Bloody Disgusting for crying out loud. And they're the number one, right? With the horror. So if yeah, they're going to report it, that Dales and Crypt was just about done. But that's what happened. It's like, oh, he's in demand now. But we didn't really cut him loose with the contract. So, hey, you want to do Dales and Crypt? I'm telling you, dude. And he probably was like, absolutely. I'll come back, and here we go. Let's pop out some episodes, because it's not going to come out to October anyway. And he's not putting a movie out now. He's writing Split Two or whatever the hell it is. So Split probably helped the Tales of Crypt, and all of a sudden now they're advertising the Crypt Keeper, which I thought they they weren't allowed to get. I don't know. So this is what happens in Hollywood, right here. He starts making two hundred, three hundred dollar, three hundred million dollar movies. He gets anything he wants, right? That anybody wants him. It's no longer oh, I don't know about him, that Shyamalan. It's a hit or miss. No, he's got one hit. He's got a hit. Period. Right now. Until he gets knocked off the throne, he's on top of the world. Bro. They can give him anything he wants. Until movie bombs, then again. So, yeah, be very worried about Kyle, man. And I gotta tell you, I'm not really worried about Logan because, again, like I was telling you, that not that I want to do the hashtag, but it's like not my Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh God, there's so much to talk about. Well, you know, the saving grace for Kong will probably be overseas. That yeah. that's probably gonna be what. What 500 million movie. easy overseas. Uh, should we do another everything show or should we continue on here? I know sometimes when we talk about too much stuff, people get a little batty. What do you think? It's up to you. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll do a little teaser. We'll talk about the comics. Um, I got to tell you that I'm very, very picky with Spider-Man. You know that. Oh, yeah. With the comics, you know that. I'm just, like, really picky. And then one minute, I love what Dan Slott's doing. And the next minute, I'm like, what the F? Throwing shit against the wall, probably, you know? But Marvel Comics in general, you know I've had problems with what they were doing. Yeah. And you know that I said this has to change. Fans must change it. And fans have changed it. And it's going to be restored in the fall. But before that happens, obviously, and, and again, I, you look at some of this stuff here and you just, you just get lost. you like, you don't even know. It's like, it's like you're 90 years old and, and you can't even get, get, keep up with what's happening in society. You know, it's like, uh-huh. you know, it just, it just happens. And it's like, I'm looking at all these different things and I just, I don't understand why. Like, I look at that, right? And it's like, I, I just can't see 
Like, I understand the Cosmic Cube is altering Steve Rogers, right? But I can't see him, like, not only, they're making him, like, worse than the Red Skull. <laughs> like, Hitler. I can't see that. Like, there's nothing in his brain that'd be like, oh, I'm Steve Rogers. I just can't see, like, him being completely evil. I just can't, oh. I, don't, I mean, how do you come back from that? I'm all right, guys. Thanks. I just killed thousands of people. I'm all right now. We fixed it the Cosmic Cube. I'm all right. Yeah, the Captain America. I'm getting my shield. No, you can't go. That's like when they made Sergeant Slaughter. Freaking with Iran and Russia. Remember that? Yeah. And he, they had to get guards for his house. Like, and he got fired from G.I. Joe. He was getting paid $2 million a year to talk, uh, to stand there like, yo, Joe, and whatever. He lost it. Um, I, I'm just lost. I'm lost with, with, you know, I don't know. To me, I just, I can't grasp how there's other universe characters in the Marvel Universe. And how do you explain it? Do you explain it? Hey, oh, by the way, I'm from another universe. I mean, you have a white Nick Fury and a black Nick Fury. And I understand they, I guess they explained it that that's his son or whatever. But then when our white Nick Fury, and I'm just, I'm not saying like white Nick Fury is our Fury because we're white. I'm saying that it's our Nick Fury from growing up. Okay. Because I'm completely okay with a black Nick Fury. But I'm saying when the Nick Fury that we know becomes the watcher, with the cloak, like something out of whatever. I don't even know what's happened. Like, I don't know what's happened. I, that's not, he's shooting guns. I don't know how he's like Yoda all of a sudden. Like, I'm confused. I'm confused. Somebody help me, Marvel. Somebody. So I, I just skim through this stuff, and I'm just like, and then I, I, I see something like this, and I'm like, okay, Spider-Man with gadgets, you know, that's probably like a fanboy's dream to see him. Like, oh, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if? But it won't be cool because why is he using his powers? Why, why, why has he got Transformer Spider Transformer Spider Meals? Like, really? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm lost. And why is there like 17 Green Goblins? I mean, are we copying off of Batman Beyond where they had the Jokers group? So now, is there going to be Goblins gang or something? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, is that what we're doing like now? Because, and then this whole look for, it's funny because they have this whole look for the Skull Spider, right? Yeah. Nobody, nobody likes it. They scrapped it. So this doesn't even exist anymore. People hated it. I mean, I'm just lost. I, I don't know. You have Old Man Logan. And, and he's just with the X Men while their X Men, while their Wolverine is encased in adamantium. He's just running. Wouldn't you say, oh, by the way, Logan's in adamantium? You know, and if I saw Wolverine too, I know that hot adamantium sword can cut through that. So, like, they're not trying to save him. The whole Marvel yeah. Universe is not trying to save Wolverine. Just leave him in there. We got our own Logan. And this clone. I don't even know what's going on with her. She's just weird. I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, this is our Doctor Doom, and he's Iron Man. That's still don't get that. It, I I just get lost, Chris. I mean, I just don't know anymore. I I'm so lost. I mean, how I, how can't you be? Look at all the I, stuff I just, that comics there's do. There's like now. 20 Captain Americas, and I don't even know. They're creating characters just for comics. Look, I mean, look at this. Come on. This is Steve Rogers, right? That's hilarious. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? How? How could this... How could... He, I understand with the Cosmic Cube, right? But what about his memories of the past... How many years as Captain America? Seriously? Like, wouldn't he be stronger than that to withstand that? I mean, he held the friggin' Infinity Goal, if I crying out loud. I don't, I don't know. And Oh, this is the smartest person in the Marvel Universe, by the way. She's like six. 
come on, what's happening here? And I'm glad this is getting wiped. I'm glad. I'm glad because it doesn't make any sense. You have a million Sorcerer Supremes. You're only supposed to have one. That was the whole point. Remember, Chris? It could be only one Sorcerer Supreme, not 15. Miles Morales. You like Miles Morales, right? You like Miles Morales, Chris? Yeah, I do. I, just, I mean, why is he with the black hat? Even though that all work is fantastic, by the way. Um, I don't know. I think, I think it's Mark Bagley, which is my favorite. Oh, it's not Mark Bagley. Well, wow, he, that, that's great artwork. I gotta tell you, but that why? is really cool. Yeah, let me just show, hold it up here for a second. That is amazing. Yeah. But why are we doing this? You lost me. And then, of course, and uh, they're throwing this at us now too. The zombies are back. Oh gosh. So they're just everything. The kitchen sink will be flying soon too because I I don't know I I, I can't explain it I I get lost it's like and it's not a female Hawkeye I I'm lost look at it I mean what please somebody help 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 me here please wipe this off the face of Marvel please so I I don't even want to talk about it anymore I was gonna do a whole cast on it. I'm not done confuse the shit out of me. <laughs> uh all right so that will be it for the everything show now we'll do some i guess tomorrow all right sounds good all right thanks chris thank you feels good to be back <laughs> um and now why can't i end this oh okay this is weird this I, i'm still at 50 percent not full capacity with the laptop. So things are changing. I will get it fixed eventually. All right, guys. Take care. Bye for now.